Hello friends and welcome to Techie Jack in Exchange Server 2016 training. In our previous video series, we have covered pre-request of Exchange Server. We installed Exchange Server 2016. We have created some mailboxes and we configured our recipient settings. So still our Exchange Server is not configured completely. In order to configure it completely, there are a lot of more other configuration we have to do in our Exchange Server. So in this module, we will be looking at the Client Access Services. We will see what all options we have to configure Client Access and what they do. If you look on this slide, we have the following option to configure our Client Access Services. Uh, after you initially deploy a server that runs Exchange Server 2016, uh, there are several client access options that you should configure before you place the server in a production environment. You can configure the client access option from the Exchange Management Shell or by using the Exchange Admin Center. In the Exchange Admin Center, you can configure these following uh, option like virtual directory settings, certificates, mobile device settings, mail flow, anti-malware protection and outlook anywhere. So if you talk about the virtual directory settings, you use these settings to configure each of the virtual directories that host services in IIS. That means uh, like we have a web access like outlook web access that is hosted in a IIS uh, on exchange server. So for each virtual directory, you can configure general settings and authentication option like you want to authenticate a user by a first name, last name or by the domain name and then username. You should configure the virtual directories by using exchange management tool rather than the IIS manager. And if you look on a certificates, uh, it is highly recommended that organization deploy the public or internally published certificate to exchange server and replace any self-signed certificates. The certificate pane in the exchange admin center allow you to manage certificates and create new certificate requests. Let's talk about the mobile device settings. Uh, we can configure uh, these device access rules and manage mobile devices in quarantine. You can also manage mobile devices and uh, mailbox policies like what kind of policies you want to make for the mobile devices you can do it with the mobile device settings and next is our mail flow the mail flow means the administrators can use this uh, in exchange admin center to manage the transport component like uh, which reside inside the client access server managing the transport component includes configuring the delivery reports, accepted domains and send and receive connectors. The anti-malware protection uh, Exchange Server 2016 includes malware filtering therefore the Exchange Admin Center allow you to configure the option for malware filtering as well. And if you look on the Outlook Anywhere option uh, you use uh, Outlook Anywhere, you can configure uh, option for external and internal host name and uh, authentication and this is not required if you are using uh, MAPI over HTTP. So before moving to our Exchange Server, I want to drive your attention towards namespace. So namespace of Exchange Server 2016 is a naming that determines how client access the services that are provided by Exchange Server 2016. In a single site, the namespace configuration is simple. All the server use a single namespace. That means if you have a small environment of your exchange organization and you have a couple of uh, exchange server like two or three exchange server you can use a single namespace but if you have a, a larger organization with a multiple sites uh, you can implement one or more namespace as well so internal and external uh, namespaces you can configure each virtual directory with an internal URL and external URL that means like uh, for ex for internal user you have a different URL and for the external user you have a different URL to access the same exchange server. These, URL are, these URLs are the namespace used by clients to connect to the client access services. 
you should configure internal URLs on all exchange servers and you should uh, configure external URL only on those exchange servers that are accessible from outside the organization. You should select the meaningful namespace because client might be uh, using it to access Outlook over the web. For example, like uh, webmail.techiejack.com would be a common namespace to use. Uh, but if there are a multiple site with Exchange Server, then you might have a namespace based on the physical location, like such as webmail.eu.techiejack.com and webmail.us.techiejack.com and you can use uh, it on a location uh, wise when there are a multiple exchange uh, server in a site uh, which share the same namespace you need to provide a load balancing mechanism and we will discuss that uh, on a later videos and after installing the virtual directories on each server that runs exchange server 2016 are configured with an internal URL using the local server name as a namespace you should update exchange server to use the correct namespace as soon as possible after the installation and the namespace used for the client access are completely independent of the active directory domain services domain name and the domain name used for SMTP you can take that example like if you have a, a local domain name by the name of abc.local and you have a real uh, domain name with the abc.com for the internal use you can use a mail.abc.local and for the external user on the internet uh, user you can use as a webmail.abc.com in our case like it's a techiejack.com uh, we have uh, internal or external we are using uh, same uh, name as uh, internal and external as well but there are many organization which uh, use uh, this policy like they want a local name to be separated with the uh, their uh, real uh, domain name so you can use abc.local as a local namespace and for the external user you have to use a uh, like uh, domain name a real a real domain name and you have to map that domain with the local domain there are some more protocols which uses the client access service and that are POP3 and IMAP. By default, Exchange Server supports POP3 and IMAP client connection, but, but these services are set to start manually. If you want to enable user access for these protocols, you must start the services and configure them to start automatically. You can use the service console to do this, or you can uh, use the Exchange Management shell to enable and disable these services. Some of the settings you can configure for POP3 and IMAP are bindings, authentication, connection and retrieval. Basically binding configures the local server address that clients can connect to. By default the port is 110 is used for unencrypted and TLS connection and port 995 is used for secure socket layer and in authentication it configures uh, the supported authentication option like supported option including basic authentication integrated windows authentication and secure logon requiring TLS the default setting is secure logon and the, with the connection configures the server settings such as timeout settings connection limits and command relay or proxy target port and retrieval configures the message formats which uh, used for these protocols and enables you to configure how client retrieve calendars request and POP3 and IMAP are automatically enabled for user uh, with a start of service you can enable or disable the POP3 or IMAP uh, when you see uh, the setting of a user you will see the POP3 and IMAPs are uh, already enabled but to work with that you have to start the services services for the POP and IMAP are not started by default you have to start the service but the settings for the user for IMAP and POP3 is automatically enabled by default you can enable or disable POP3 and IMAP for individual mailboxes this is configured in the properties of each mailbox in Exchange Admin Center or by using a set mailbox command line.
let's have a look on a auto discover as well the auto discovery service in exchange server 2016 simplifies client configuration in outlook 2010 2013 2016 and exchange active sync clients auto discover provides configuration information that outlook required to create the uh, configuration profile for the client. Outlook client can also use the auto discover service to repair exchange server connection settings or if the user mailbox is moved to a different uh, server the auto discover service provide profile settings to Outlook 2010, 13, 16 client and supported mobile devices based on the user's email address and password. And one thing to uh, note is that uh, providing only an email address and password for automatic configuration with auto discover works only if the user email address is equal to users UPN if that is not the case uh, the user is prompted for credential to authenticate I hope if you found this video informative please do subscribe the channel for more upcoming advanced sessions and in our next video we will be deploying and configuring client access services on Exchange Server 2016. So let's meet in a next video.